Is China building a new aircraft carrier? The U.S.-China trade war heats up, and PUBG gets shot in China. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. This is China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This week's China News Headlines. Last year, at the request of the U.S. government, Canada arrested Meng Wanzhou, the CFO of Huawei. Huawei is the Chinese telecom company the U.S. has been warning everyone is a national security threat. Meng is accused of violating U.S. sanctions on Iran. And now, after months of waiting, we finally have an update. Meng's extradition trial is set to begin in January 2020. And it could go on for any length of time. That's so unfair. If only the Canadian legal system were more like the Chinese legal system, where a foreigner can be sentenced to death after a quick trial. Satellite photos of a shipyard outside Shanghai show China is building a mysteriously large ship. This photo was published by the Washington-based think tank, the Center for Strategic and International Studies, or CSIS. You know what? I can look at satellite photos and comment about them, too. Doesn't mean I give myself some fancy pants name like the Center for Strategic Looking at Stuff. Here, let me give it a go. Here's a photo from the Gobi Desert. It's a bunch of lines, which could be a secret thing. Fine, here's one from the middle of Kazakhstan. I know what it is. It's a giant pentagram. I have no idea what to make of it, though. Okay, this is harder than it looks. According to CSIS, parts of the ship's hull are over 130 feet wide. Experts said while it was difficult to be sure, the size and scale of the new vessel strongly suggested China's much-anticipated new aircraft carrier, referred to as Type 002. And Chinese state-run media has been hinting at it as well. Okay, that's a bit more than a hint. The Chinese Communist Party has been rapidly trying to build up its navy. According to U.S. government reports, in two years, the People's Liberation Army Navy added 32 ships. Hopefully China's new aircraft carrier will be better than its last one. I'm just kidding. Hopefully the new one will be a piece of junk, too. More on the latest developments in the U.S.-China trade war. This Reuters report suggests China may not have been that serious about making reforms. In each of the seven chapters of the draft trade deal, China had deleted its commitments to change laws to resolve core complaints that caused the U.S. to launch a trade war, theft of U.S. intellectual property and trade secrets, forced technology transfers, competition policy, access to financial services, and currency manipulation. I know, we're all shocked. Try to breathe. Of course, the Reuters report cites anonymous sources, so we don't know if that's all true. But there have been signs that maybe the trade negotiations aren't going as planned. That's okay, though, because the Chinese economy is full of resilience, according to state-run media. Yes, the Chinese economy is just chock full of resilience. People are practically tripping over the resilience. And that's good, because as of Friday, the Trump administration went ahead and increased tariffs on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods. It came after a pivotal round of trade talks in Washington on Thursday night failed to produce a trade agreement. So what will the Chinese Communist Party do now? Well, obviously they're upset. And they vow to take necessary countermeasures. What exactly those countermeasures are is not clear. Hopefully, it's deep introspection, culminating in the realization that it's morally wrong to steal other people's intellectual property. But I won't hold my breath. There's one part of China that's getting a lot of love from the U.S. government, Taiwan. I mean, the Chinese Communist Party considers Taiwan a part of China, so it should be very happy about the new pro-Taiwan bill. Okay, obviously the Chinese regime is freaking out. In the past, similar bills have brought the threat of war. And I mean, you know, the Chinese Communist Party could have an entire fleet of three aircraft carriers, some of which might even work properly, so watch out. But here's the real shocker to the story. The bill supporting Taiwan was passed unanimously in the U.S. House of Representatives, as in 414 to 0. I didn't think that many Democrats and Republicans could ever agree on anything. As I always like to say, the Chinese Communist Party is really bringing America together. But if this bill does spark a war, be warned, the People's Liberation Army fears nothing. 
That's according to this recent video by State Run People's Daily. Here they are, heroically jumping neck deep into a hole filled with muddy water. Jumping into a hole filled with muddy water? Well, at least they'll be ready for a career in politics. Do you like the Chinese style model of mass surveillance? Who doesn't? Certainly not the city of Darwin, Australia. They're bringing it home. Inspired by the Chinese model, they'll be setting up poles fitted with speakers, cameras, and Wi-Fi. This will allow the Darwin City Council to gain data on how many people walk on what footpaths and where they use certain websites and apps in the city. It's what the residents there have always wanted, a mass surveillance tool in the hands of the government. And finally, are you a fan of the South Korean-made game player Unknown's Battlegrounds, aka PUBG? I mean, pretending to kill people, what could be more fun? But if you like PUBG, I hope you're not in China, because it's been pulled in favor of a more patriotic game. That more patriotic game is called Elite Force for Peace, or Game for Peace. An expert speaking to Reuters says it's almost exactly the same. The gameplay, the background, the graphic design, and the characters, they're almost the same. Almost. The new game is apparently more socialist and focuses on China's Air Force fighting terrorists. The important part is you're still running around killing people. But in Elite Force for Peace, when you shoot people, they don't bleed, and the dead get up and wave goodbye. Yeah, that's what peace is all about. And just goes to show, there's no foreign intellectual property Chinese companies won't rip off and make into a slightly stupider version. This all happened because Tencent, the Chinese mega company that licensed PUBG, did not get a license renewal from Chinese censors to continue to publish the game. Tencent got angry and tried shooting the censors, but the censors just got back up and waved. So, what do you think? Leave your comments below. And now it's time for me to answer a question from one of you, a fan who supports China Uncensored with a dollar or more per episode by contributing through Patreon. Hepe Christensen asks, Chris, when can we expect to see you on the top 10 most wanted by the CCP? Or do you aim for top three? Oh my gosh, that would be a dream come true. Unless, of course, the CCP really tries to go after me. Like, arrest me in Hong Kong level kind of thing. You know, the more I think about this, the more creeped out I am. I mean, if they're even using Chinese-inspired surveillance in parts of Australia, I might start to have some problems. I think I'll stick to flying under the radar. Thanks for your question. And thanks to everyone watching. We couldn't make this show without your support, whether it's on Patreon or just watching and sharing the show with your friends and family. So thank you from me and everyone on the China Uncensored team. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.